and he's like, I'm sorry, I can't do this. Investing time into myself. Have y'all heard Ariana Grande's new album? If I could go back in time, if I could go back in time. I can't, I can't, I can't do this. Case closed, case closed, case closed. Hi everyone, my name is Ada and welcome to my channel or welcome back. Today, I just wanted to sit down, gossip, chit chat with you guys while I get ready pretend like we're on FaceTime, really get into things. Nothing is off limits. Well, there are things off limits, I shouldn't say that. You guys can get ready with me too, if you have somewhere to be, or if you just wanna do your makeup for fun, or your skincare, or you can eat something. I don't know how long this video is gonna be, probably long, cause I ramble, but just get comfortable. And we're gonna dive deep into some things while I do some type of makeup look. I have no idea what I wanna do. I think I wanna do like a pink look to kinda match my shirt. I'm also gonna be playing with some of my like older makeup products back from like the 2016 2019 beauty girl makeup community era my makeup bag right here the further you go down the deeper the history gets so i just want to have fun today and talk with you guys because i feel like it's been a while and i don't really have many people to talk to i have my best friend and she already knows everything i'm probably going to talk about today so now it falls on you, so I'm so sorry. I'm gonna be trying my Charlotte Tilbury contour wand again. I have not used this in maybe a year. Is this supposed to sound like that? I don't remember it making noise when I used to use it. It's so liquidy. Oh, that's expired, babe. Maybe I'm not gonna use that. That is so expired. I'm gonna take that off of my face, actually. My, like, cheeks are tingling. I think it's, like, a placebo effect. I think I'm making myself think that they're tingling because the product is not funny, so now... My brain is like, oh my god, you're gonna die. How have you been? I hope you've been doing well with work, school, whatever endeavors you've been working towards, whatever hobbies you're doing. I've been pretty good. I've really just been focusing on school and work the past little while. My life has been pretty quiet, which isn't a bad thing. Now, this is just my opinion, but having a simple, quiet life where most days follow like a basic routine isn't a bad thing i actually kind of enjoy it i am very much a person that enjoys routine and it comforts me to know that most days are going to play out the same way with like few adjustments maybe i like go out to a restaurant this day or maybe i hang out with anna my best friend another day like i really like having a basic routine with small adjustments on a day-to-day -day basis it helps me plan it helps me maintain control of my life i think i like having control i don't like being stuck in the unknown it's very daunting i don't think many people like being stuck in the unknown i went up for brunch yesterday with my best friend and we hadn't seen each other in like two weeks which is a long time for us and she was like oh how have you been and i literally had basically nothing to say because the past two weeks, for example, have just been work, school, doing assignments, going to classes, etc. And I've basically been in my own bubble besides seeing my coworkers at work, which is obvious because I work in a very public customer facing setting. And it's nice and I love seeing my coworkers, but then I come home and I'm just back alone. Obviously I, I live with my family, so I see them every day, but my social circle is very small. It's literally just, my best friend Anna, and that's it. That is my entire social circle that I see on a regular basis. If you wanna count my coworkers in my social circle, then I guess I see them too, but that's more so we have to be there, we have to see each other, and I don't really hang out with any of my coworkers outside of work, and I don't really expect to. We are close. I do consider myself close with a few of my coworkers, but we just have never hung out outside of work, and that's fine by me, and I could definitely see it happening in the future, but it hasn't happened yet. I will admit it is hard sometimes, especially if I think too much about it. And sometimes I do have those days where I do feel super lonely and I do get sad and upset. And I remember back to a few years ago, like first, second year of university when I had a bigger group of friends because I lived in res and I met friends in my building and school friends and they turned into friends that I hung out with outside of class and stuff and it translated into second year when we moved into student housing. We all lived super close. We all saw each other on a regular basis. We were all studying together. It was so nice. And then we just slowly fell out. There was nothing bad that happened. There was no hard feelings. It just, we drifted apart 
which is natural for humans. The point that I am at in my life right now is I'm starting to become more comfortable being alone and doing things alone. I don't think there should be any shame in going to the movies alone, going out to eat alone, going to cafes alone, going shopping alone. I actually think it's nice to have those moments where you just spend time alone with yourself, treating yourself to like a little me day. I mean, for example, I went to Toronto the other week by myself and I went to cafes. I did photo booths by myself. I went shopping by myself and it's a little intimidating. I do still get anxious whenever I do things by myself, but I'm becoming more comfortable. This current moment in my life reminds me of late 2020, early 2021 when I went back to my hometown and I lived in my hometown for like three-ish months between December and February, whereas all of my friends were back in their student houses and obviously it was during the pandemic, so I couldn't do anything, so I was sort of forced to be by myself. But I remember how almost fun it was and how I enjoyed it, but I think it was because A, I still had friends who I could text, FaceTime, whatever. It was only a three month period before I moved back to my student house. And also it was out of my control. Like there was not much I could do about it. The pandemic was going on. Everything was still shut down. Then not long after I moved back to my student house, I got into my first relationship. And that was another sense of loneliness that I hadn't felt before, especially the further my relationship progressed. I somehow felt so lonely when I was in that relationship, like towards the end of our relationship, even though I was constantly with him. I was with him physically, but mentally and emotionally, we were in two completely different places, but I was too scared to leave. I felt like I couldn't leave because all I really had was him at that point in time. I was still friends with my old friend group, but we were seeing each other way less. We were definitely not as close. I truly felt like the only person I had was him and I barely even had him. I had him physically. Like I was afraid to be physically alone. Like I was afraid to be in a room alone. Towards the end of our relationship, he went on a date with another girl and I went back to my student house and I sat in my room and I sobbed because I was constantly overthinking everything, especially towards the end of our relationship. And I just sobbed and I called my mom and I was like, I cannot do this. I cannot do this. I cannot physically imagine him with another girl and then trying to come back to me. My mom was like, Ada, this is a sign. This is a sign. And I was like, I know it is, but I'm just so afraid to be alone. I think it was easier for me to move on because around that time when we were like ending, ending things, I met my new friends. This is around the time that I met Anna and I told her countless times that if I had not met her and the other people that were in our friend group at the time, I genuinely don't know what I would have done because the thought of not having anyone at all was so daunting and scary after having someone for almost a year that I spent basically 24 seven with. And that friend group, especially Anna, truly helped me to finally like end things, like pick myself up, be like, Ada, you gotta go. You gotta move on. This is time to start your healing journey. I don't know what things would have been like if I hadn't met Anna in my history class and she hadn't kept complimenting me. And one day she basically was like, you should come and hang out with my friends and I in the student center. And I was like, okay, because I had nothing else to do. I was like, oh my God, okay. I was so excited. Obviously I didn't show it at the moment, but inside I was so excited that there was the potential that I had friends again. And here we are. Those friends truly helped me more than they know. I mean, Anna knows, but if the other friends from that friend group are watching, you guys truly helped me more than you know. The main part of that tangent was that I had never felt more alone than I did when I was in that relationship. And I was constantly with him, constantly surrounded by him, his friends, his roommates, whatever. But I felt so alone, especially from like September to December 2021, I felt so alone, which is weird because I was alone and felt alone in like January, February 2021 too, but I was somehow content in that loneliness and I feel like I've reached a point in my life right now where I am starting to become content and comfortable being alone, doing things alone, trying things alone, spending time alone 
investing time into myself. Like if there's a movie that I want to see that none of my friends want to see, I will go alone. I've gone to two concerts alone. I went to both Keshi concerts alone because none of my friends listen to Keshi, but I wasn't gonna let that stop me. And I still had a great time. Obviously I was anxious as hell because it's a concert and most people go to concerts together and I went alone, but I still had such a good time and I still enjoyed the music. That was a very long tangent about loneliness, but I think it's just fresh on the mind because I started watching a new YouTuber yesterday. Her name is Via Lee. I just relate to her on so many levels. She is my age. She does a lot of things alone. I found so much like solace and comfort in watching her videos and I've binge watched so many since finding her yesterday, especially her travel vlogs. Like she has traveled to different countries alone and it's very anxiety inducing and there are videos where she cries but she gets through it every time and I think that's important to remember like you will always get through it no matter how scary it is in the moment. I could see myself solo traveling in the future so I just I relate to her. I relate to her on another level and her videos are so comforting. Speaking of boys though I thought it'd be funny to discuss some of my embarrassing or juicy boy stories because right as we were leaving brunch yesterday I randomly got a flashback to something I did for a man you know when you remember those memories that like internally crushes you and you physically like wince in like cringiness yeah that was one of those moments so I guess we'll start with that story basically as my first relationship was ending I was starting to go on dates again I met this guy who was very nice very sweet and we hit things off and we decided to hang out. This is back when I still lived in my student house, so I was in city A, he was in city B, kind of far away. Remember, I don't have a car at my student house. He's like, you can come over, you can hang out, we'll have fun, blah, blah, blah. He's like, you can stay over if you want. I'm like, maybe not, it's our first time meeting. I'm like, yeah, like, let me find a way to get to you. So we decided on a day to hang out. If I could go back in time, if I could go back in time, and slap my old self over the head, I would. I would. I literally didn't even have a job at this point and I was spending money like this. I kid you not, when I say I spent $75 on an Uber, both ways. I Ubered to and from his house, from city A to city B, quite a bit of a distance. I think it was like a 40 minute drive. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't do this. 50 minutes it's a 50 minute drive i paid 75 dollars. that's an estimate i could probably go into my uber receipts and check that's too far though and i think i stayed at his house for maybe three four hours because i was just not really feeling it also this is right after my ex and i broke things off and i was like feeling guilty i was like oh my god like what if he finds out and he's upset we were literally broken up i don't know why my brain was thinking that this is so embarrassing Y'all, I cannot believe I'm saying this out loud. The more I say it out loud, the more embarrassed I get because it's like, oh my God, oh my God. The cherry on top of the cake is that I think I had like $180 in my bank account. $180 in my bank account. And I spent 150 of that $180 to Uber to this man's house and stay for four hours and then Uber back. And the funny thing is I saw him again on New Year's. We spent New Year's Eve 2021 together. But I drove that time because I was back home, obviously, so I had a car. I drove that time, so I didn't spend no money on Ubers. Yeah, that happened. That that did, in fact, happen. Another funny incident happened in, like, mid-2022. So I want to say, like, it was May or June-ish. I've actually told this story on the channel before, back when it originally happened. But I'm going to tell it again because I think it's funny and it's been long enough that a lot of you probably haven't seen that vlog. So I was going to go on this date with this guy. We've been talking for a few days. He was like, oh, it's my birthday. I want to go out for a birthday dinner. I'm like, oh, and you're inviting me on your birthday dinner when we've never met before. Okay. He's like, where do you want to go? I'm like, it's your birthday. Like, why are you asking me where I want to go? He's like, oh, like, I don't really mind. So I, I was like, let's go to K BBQ because I hadn't had it in a while. And I'm like, I really want it. So he's like, that's, that's fine. That sounds good to me. So he was going to come pick me up and then we were going to go to dinner and like celebrate his birthday or whatever, which I thought was kind of weird, but I'm like free dinner. So like, let me go. He comes, this man was not attractive in the slightest, but he was six foot eight. And so I was like, you know what? Let me let me close my eyes. So he came and picked me up in this really big truck. 
I am, I'm a tall girl. I'm like 5'10", five, 5'11"-ish. Five, I had trouble getting into his truck. That's how tall it was. So we get in. We say hi. 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 I'm Ida. Nice to meet you. I forget what his name is. We start driving. We're driving down one of the side roads in my town. We've been driving for maybe two or three minutes. Not even, actually. Maybe like a minute, a minute and a half. He stops the car. He pulls into a parking lot, turns around, and starts driving back towards my house. And he's like, I'm sorry, I can't do this. I'm like, what? I'm like, huh? What do you mean? What do you mean you can't do this? What, what, what? This is your birthday dinner. You invited me to your birthday dinner. What do you mean you can't do it? He's like, I just can't do it. I'm like, okay, whatever. So he kept apologizing and I was like, you are just making things so much more awkward right now. So stop apologizing. Like, I genuinely don't care. I was just in it for the free dinner and you've disappointed me. So drop me back off at home if that's what you're gonna do. We were driving back to my house. He kept apologizing. He was like, I'm sorry, you're like so pretty, but I just can't do this. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just like keep driving. I think at one point I was like, okay, you can stop apologizing. Like you're just you're making things more awkward. You're making things worse. He drops me back off. I like I'm rushing out of this truck. I'm rushing. He's like, you can keep the flowers if you want, because he got me fake flowers. He had got two different bouquets and was like, pick a hand, which it was cute in the moment. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna keep the flowers. I'm gonna keep something from this. Cause you wasted my time. I didn't even get to my house. I didn't even get inside my house. I stepped maybe five steps away from the truck and I called Anna. I FaceTimed her. I was like, girl, you will not believe what just happened. I came inside my house. My mom was like, why are you back already? I explained the entire situation. I found it so funny. I wasn't hurt at all or anything. I was a little upset that I didn't get the free dinner, but at least he made that decision a minute away from my house and not like when we were almost there. Could you imagine? We were like almost at the restaurant. He was like, actually, I can't do this. I I can't do it. I almost forgot about this story, but I need to tell y'all this. This happened at work like three weeks ago. <sighs> so this was on a Thursday. I remember so vividly. It was a Thursday morning. It started out like any other Thursday morning or any other weekday morning at work. I was taking customers orders at the front and this regular walks in and he's an older man. Maybe like late forties, early fifties ish. I know he has kids. He comes in. He is always so nice, or he'd always been so nice before that, and he would always call me by my first name, which isn't weird in and of itself, but he would only ever refer to me as my first name and would never use any of my coworkers' first names. That's what made it weird to me. That's besides the point. Before this, he had been normal, so I was like, you know, happy to see him, happy to serve him, or whatever. He orders one of our traveler coffees, because I work at a coffee shop, and it's where you get like a big container of coffee and it makes like 12 small cups or whatever. I make it for him. It takes like 10-15 minutes. I haven't get to him at the end so that's close to where the front doors are. He looks me dead in the eyes and goes, oh I have a question. I'm like sure what is it? Thought I think it was gonna be normal. He goes are you from Tennessee? I go Tennessee? Do I look like I'm from Tennessee? In my head I'm like that but in reality I'm like no because I thought he was asking because maybe I look like someone that he recognized or knew. This man then goes, cause you're the only 10 I see. Case closed, case closed, case closed. Why would I say that? I, I still don't know. When I get nervous or when I'm in a situation where I don't know what to do, I freeze or I have a scream laugh that I do. When something's funny or when something's shocking, I go, <laughs> I did that way louder than I just did. Cause it was genuine. It was a genuine like scream laugh. I turn around. I am walking back towards the front counter cause I have to give him the cups of milk and cream that go with the coffee. My face turns all red. My supervisor is like, what is going on? What is going on? I'm like, I don't say anything. I grab the cups. I'm like, let me just get this over with, give it to him. I go to give him the milk and the cream. He looks me dead in the eyes with a smirk on his face and goes, bet you weren't expecting that, were you? And he winks at me walks out. I turn around, my coworkers are like, what is going on? So my supervisor is like, oh, like what happened? I'm like, you will not believe what that man just said to me. She's like, what? I told her. She's like, oh my God. My coworkers are all like, what in the hell just happened? My supervisor is like, do you want me to like talk to him next time he comes in? I'm like, no, I should have said yes because he has come in multiple times since then looking for me, purposely looking around the room, looking for me. The other day I was making drinks and the bar that I was working on was the closest to the front doors. He walks in. Not like I can just run away in that moment. My biggest issue is that he is acting like nothing happened when clearly I'm still 
uncomfortable when he walked in and I was uncomfortable at the moment. I was visibly uncomfortable. I didn't give him a good reaction. So I don't know why he is just acting like nothing happened. Maybe things that would be for the best, but I just wish he would come up to me and like apologize and be like, hey, sorry I said that because I didn't give him a good reaction. So I don't know why he would think that was normal or why he think I enjoyed that. I didn't, I was very much uncomfortable. And I think I was extra uncomfortable because my last relationship, which was 2022, the man that I dated in that relationship was a customer at my old job, and that is how we met. So it was giving me deja vu. I I, I was like, I couldn't, I can't, I, uh, no, I cannot go through a repeat of that. Please stop. Don't do that again. Don't interact with me again. Actually, you can say hi or whatever if I have to serve you, but like, don't. Just don't. Don't look for me. Don't call me Ada again. Don't don't use my name. Your name privileges have been revoked. You are no longer allowed to call me by my name. I'm not really liking this makeup look. It's not really giving. I don't think it matches the shirt. I think it, the pink in the eye doesn't match the pink of the shirt. <sighs> it's fine. We're just going with the flow. I think it's time to talk about something more lighthearted because we've talked about loneliness. We've talked about boys. We've talked about weird customers. Let's talk about hobbies and stuff. Have y'all heard Ariana Grande's new album? How many Ariana natives are here? It has been on repeat. It is already my most listened to album of the month and it came out five days ago. I've already streamed it like 120 times. I have one of those apps that tells you how many times you stream things. I think it's so fun to look at every now and then. The album is such a masterpiece. I remember when I first heard it, when I was first listening to it, I listened to it on the car ride to work at 4.30 in the morning, the day that it came out. I only listened like to half of the album because I had to work obviously. After having listened to it so many times, my three favorite tracks are Eternal Sunshine. I think Eternal Sunshine is actually my favorite. I love that track. And when you put it together with the Saturn interlude, y'all, I know it's an interlude, but if you listen to that and then Eternal Sunshine back to back, as they are supposed to be listened to in the album, it just adds so much more power to Eternal Sunshine the song. I really like The Boy's Mind. I think that one is pretty popular. And I really like Supernatural, but I really like the Troy Sivan remix. The original one is good too, but I love when Troy and Ariana get together. Other music I've been loving, obviously Twice's new album. I really like Rush, One Spark. One Spark, actually, such a good title track. I have been enjoying Le Seraphim's new EP. I know there's a lot of stuff surrounding Le Seraphim right now, and their encore stages, and their title track. I personally am not a big fan of Easy, but I love Swan Song and I love Smart. For TV, all I've really been watching is Drag Race. It's the only TV show I watch regularly. I watch it every week. I watch the English ones with my mom because she doesn't like subtitles. And then I watch the non-English ones by myself. I'm a YouTube girly through and through. I like to watch things or put on something in the background. And when I'm watching a TV show or a movie, it's something that I tend to actually want to like pay attention to so I don't watch them as often as I used to when I had more time. Do y'all ever see people from high school and are like I can tell you I I do I do I've definitely been there. Also sometimes I see someone from high school and they look the exact same and I'm like it's been five years and you haven't had a single ounce of a glow up. It's not even just like a physical glow up like a mental emotional glow up. There are some people who I will talk to or I've heard about and I'm like they still think the exact same way. They still act the exact same way from when we were 17, 18. And maybe it's just because I've had an extreme transformation. I don't really look, act, think how I did four years ago when I was 18. But it's just crazy to me that some people have not changed like at all. Like at all. Like not even a bit. Here's the finished look. I actually did like how the makeup turned out. Once I put lashes on and lips and everything, it all came together. The hair, I don't know what the hair is doing. Thank you so much for getting ready with me today and just listening to me talk, gossiping, whatever. This is really fun. It was really actually therapeutic to just talk to you guys. It's been so long. I don't remember the last time I did a sit down video where I just talked and spelled all my thoughts out to you guys like you are my therapist because you, I mean, you guys kind of are. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure to like and subscribe down below. All my social medias are also in the description, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. It would mean a lot if you went over and follow me on those platforms. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you in the next one. Bye.